Kelmscott Manor, for 25 years the beloved country home of William Morris, social theorist, man of letters, designer, pioneer conservationist, whose work continues to influence and delight thousands of people all over the world. We need your help to conserve and improve Kelmscott so that future generations of artists, scholars and visitors can be inspired by this very special place. The manor was built by a yeoman farmer by the name of Thomas Turner in 1600. And when Morris traveled up the Thames in 1871 and saw this place, he instantly fell in love with it. The battered vertical lines of the walls and the timbers that supported them instantly illuminated the past. Man-made, fashioned and crafted by skilled hands to suit a useful purpose. Morris said, the lapse of time will not turn a bad building into a good, any more than it will turn bad wine into good, but it will most often make a good building very much more beautiful. He loved Kelmscott's subtle beauty, and it was here that he was able to formulate his ideas about society, how we live, and what we should value, protect, and share. The willows, thistles, hawthorns, grapes, and strawberries used in his designs can still be seen in the gardens. After returning to Kelmscott from his busy life, he wrote, The old house had me in its arms again. He had an almost conjugal relationship with this house. It was more than just a country retreat. As he described it in News From Nowhere, it was a heaven on earth. For Morris, Kelmscott represented what was wholesome and beautiful in the natural and man-made environment. It helped him cleanse from his mind the fussy clutter of the Victorian parlor in favor of plain beauty and purpose. These rooms, which look back to medieval precedents, also pointed the way towards the simple functionality that characterizes so much modern design and architecture. No doubt it was for Dante Gabriel Rossetti too. He lived here along with Morris and Morris's wife Jane, with whom Rossetti was passionately in love. For Morris and his contemporaries, Edward Byrne Jones, Philip Webb, Ford Maddox Brown, Ernest Jimson, Jane Morris, and of course his daughter May, art, architecture, and objects had to be modest and subtle and not some grand statement about learning and technique. What matters most is what it is. After all, as Morris said, what business have we at all with art unless we can all share it? Fifty years ago, the Society of Antiquaries, of which William Morris was a fellow, saved Kelmscott Manor from dereliction and opened it to thousands of visitors from all over the world. William Morris is an international figure, and his work is part of our common culture. We want everyone who comes here to feel the sense of wonder that we feel and William Morris felt in what's been described as this haunt of ancient peace. We need your help to maintain this inspirational and fragile environment. You can support Kelmscott Manor by visiting it and letting its simplicity and beauty inspire you too. Or you can become a friend and engage with us and in the work we do. Or you can become more involved still and be a patron. I was quite surprised. I didn't expect it to be so good, so beautiful and such a stunning collection. I find it a fascinating story and the work that they did and the influence they had is just amazing. I love the, um, the sort of poem or the saying around one of the four poster beds. It's, it's a lovely thing to read. 
Join me and help secure the future of Kelmscott Manor. In William Morris's words, what we have to do is simple enough. By a little care and patience, we may preserve these old buildings for another 500 or 600 years.